one of my favourite places in the world. I'm looking forward to going. Coming to that seat for takeoff. Well, that's good news. So say the baggage is coming. It is a wee bit a race against time because she's obviously performing tonight and we need to get set up and ready to go by 20 past six. So I'm a wee bit worried that we might not get there in time. Nightmare that we were delayed, absolute nightmare. But we're coming, John. I'm not missing this for the world. It's here. get the train and then train to Guildford and then a taxi from Guildford train station to the actual theatre itself. Welcome to the shuttle for Gatwick South Terminal and train station. Oh, the train was a nightmare. The train was an absolute nightmare. We were packed in there like sardines. I didn't even get a seat. I stood there for 40 minutes in a stifling hot train. Yeah, I'm just glad you made it. As I said on the plane, I, I, and I should be careful what I say here because it's got a taxi driver, but I don't like London. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it myself. You don't like it, see? Even the taxi driver doesn't like it. <laughs> Mate, I'm going to see John Collins. Oh no, we're stopping, he's going to come over and slap me now. Isn't he? Yeah. Oh my god, roll the window up. This year I've interviewed John, uh, Joanna Lumley, yeah. Meg Ryan, oh. uh, a whole host of wonderful, amazing women. And I'm more nervous about this than anybody else. Well, don't be nervous. <laughs> See, before it's we start the interview, Joan, uh, yeah. can I call you Joan? Of course. Right, I've got some presents for you. Okay. Because I know you're shooting up to Edinburgh at the weekend. I am, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've got you some what Edinburgh sweeties. Edinburgh sweeties? Rock? Yes. God, that'll break the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's for your, your oh, trip up the road. Thank you. Okay, I've got you a wee pillow to put oh, around your neck. Oh, wee pillow. A wee pillow's always good. You put that... Oh, yeah, that's great, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, put it around your neck yeah, and it I've relaxes you. Yeah, I've seen these at the airport. Yeah. But I've never... Um, I've never got one. Well, there you go. Thank you got you, one now. And Ewan. one more thing for you, honey. Oh, aren't I lucky? A wee Scottish rubber ducky. Oh, I love those. You like ducks? Yes, yes. That'll go in my bathtub. <laughs> and it says Scotland on it. Well, you know, my husband is half Scottish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have such a great sense of humour, you Scots. <laughs> it's very droll and dry and naughty. Yeah, it really is. It's very, very... Do you get the feeling that I'm a little naughty? No. No. Are you? Do you want me to? I, well, we, we'll soon find out. You're, you're heading to Edinburgh. Yes. And um, what can people expect from your Edinburgh show? You can expect a show in which the audience have as much to do as I do. Right. Because they are the ones who are asking me the questions. I don't know what I am going to say. I hope that the audience will have plenty of really good questions, like, what do you think of haggis? <laughs> Don't ask that. <laughs> there is a saying that goes around in Hollywood. At 20, a woman is like America, fresh, new, and ready to be discovered. And after 60, a woman is like Africa. Everyone knows where it is, but no one wants to go there. They usually, they, they're very interested in Dynasty. Mm -hmm. They're very interested in talking about Hollywood when I first went, the people that I met, like Paul Newman and Marlon Brando and those kind of people. And occasionally I get an odd question like, so how was it in the stud when you were stuck in the lift with <laughs> Oliver Tobias? <laughs> <laughs> right. that, was the, wait, wait. that was the silliest question. I, I, am, I am so happy that you've mentioned the movie The Stud. Oh, yeah? Because when I was a teenage boy, my first adult movie no. that I ever watched was wow. you, young lady, in yeah. The Stud. Really? Mm -hmm. I was well. 14 at the time. Oh, good. And oh, my <laughs> word. 
Yes. You, you stirred things in me that I didn't know existed well, until I saw that you. that was the point, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was a much better film than, than people gave it credit. Yeah. And it was actually shot in Tramp Nightclub, where my sister, you know, she wrote the book where she uh, set it. So it was, um, I had a great time doing it, except for the, some scenes I didn't like, but I got drunk to do those. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, got, you got drunk for the, can I, can I say the word, orgy scene? Yes. Yes, there was mm -hmm. an orgy scene. You were drunk for that scene? Yeah. Yeah, so All of us were. <laughs> Listen, everybody who did love scenes in the 70s and 80s got drunk. You have to kind of get rid of your inhibitions. I mean, yeah. you co-starred in some iconic TV shows over the years, Starsky and Hutch and Star mm -hmm. Trek, Man yeah. from Uncle. Yeah. Do you have any particular favourite, fond memory of either of those shows? Well, I really like doing um, The Man from Uncle because David McCallum and I were at RADA together at right. drama school. And in fact, we dated. He was like one of my first dates. We were both 16. And so it was lovely that he asked me to be in it when my career wasn't exactly going brilliantly. And, and of course, I loved doing Star Trek. That was great. It's a, that's an iconic show. William Shatner fell in love with you on that episode. Yeah. But every, Kirk did everybody Shatner. appears to fall in love with you whenever they've met you. Do they? There's something about you. And I don't and I, know what that I is. Think, I think I'm falling in love with you right now. Oh, you and don't you dare. <laughs> I better call my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there is something about you. And I, and I can't put my finger on what it is, Joan. From the first moment that I saw you in the stud to watching you in Dynasty and watching you through your career, there is something about you that is just so attractive. And, oh. and you're, I'm attracted to you sat here right now. Really? Do you get that a lot from men and women? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> from the Pharaohs to the Flintstones. From Babe to Betch to Old Broad. It's been a pleasure spending the night with all of you. Um, a couple of months ago, I interviewed Joanna Lumley, who you will know very yeah, well. Yeah, I do know Joanna. She's lovely. And Joanna is lovely. And we were talking about the aging process. And she gave me some advice. And as you know, she's a gorgeous, beautiful woman uh, like yourself. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to, to, to anyone out there in regards to the aging process? Because... Well, don't let it get you down as each decade. Each decade is the hardest one, you know. Uh, 30 is the big one, of course, yeah. at first, and then it's 40 and then it's 50, and I've gone through a few of those. But if you allow yourself to become intimidated by that, if you, and if you allow yourself to be defined by your age, that's another big mistake. Like women, I read a lot of magazines and a lot of articles about women say, I'm 45 now and I feel that I've lost it and I don't have this and I don't have that. You can't feel like that. 70 is the new 50. When I, was on, when I was on social media and I told everyone I was coming here to meet you, women and men of all ages and of all backgrounds were like, Joan Collins, icon, love her. And, and I was surprised at the reaction from, from all different age groups. And I think the reason for that is, is this, and I'm going to read out a quote from you if you're okay with this. <laughs> all right? Dear. I was castigated because I chose my own path in life and showed I wouldn't kowtow to any man. I think that encapsulates why you know what I mean, with people, people just love you for who you are and what you, you stood by what you believe in. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never believed in um, allowing anybody to boss me around. Yeah. And I am, I think, my own woman. That has also caused me to have enemies. Yeah. And I came into the business at a very young age um, when I was referred to all the time as the girl. Put the light on the girl. Get the girl to sit over here. And so I just, decided that, um, you know, with maturity, that I would, um, you know, do my own thing. Yeah, well, that may have looked like fun, but it was like kissing an ashtray. So, um, it's coming up to 20 past 12. It's been a brilliant day. I'm on the Caledonia sleeper heading back up to Glasgow. Was it worth it? Oh my word, was it worth it? Of course it was worth it. I would have actually travelled further to see her. She, she was amazing. Joan's 83 and Joanna Lumley is 70. And if I had a choice between the two... It'd be Joan. Now, you need to leave. 
Nighty-night. <laughs>